So the Catherine is a new generation of trials, which we call a post neoadjuvant treatment. What is it about? Uh, we know that patients with very high risk breast cancer, which is HER2 positive or triple negative breast cancer, have uh, quite a high risk of recurrence and metastasis if after neoadjuvant treatment these patients still have um, breast and uh, lymph node uh, left uh, tumors, so uh, result disease. So in these patients we uh, did a very new type of trial in the Catherine study we, which is a post neoadjuvant treatment. So that means that these patients received in the post neoadjuvant treatment with Brazil disease in the breast after neoadjuvant therapy, they received either the standard of treatment, which is anti HER2 treatment with trastuzumab, or the TDM1, which is an antibody drug conjugate. 1,500 patients have been randomized, and basically the study has shown a 50% reduction in the uh, risk of recurrence and metastasis. The results which have been published in the New England Journal of Medicine in December 2018 and actually have changed worldwide the international guidelines for the treatment of breast cancer patients, meaning that breast cancer patients who have HER2 positive disease are now treated with neoadjuvant treatment with chemotherapy and anti-HER2 treatment with either trastuzumab or the double combination trastuzumab and pertuzumab. And after the neoadjuvant treatment, if they have residual disease in the breast or in the lymph nodes, these patients are treated with TDM1. Now the new results which present, uh, we present here at ESMO in Barcelona are aiming to three aspects, secondary endpoints. Number one, the uh, incidence and resolution of peripheral neuropathy. Number two, the incidence and resolution of thrombo thrombocytopenia. And number two, the incidence of CNS metastasis. So for the first aspect, peripheral neuropathy, uh, we know that the patient in the Catherine study, most of them have been treated uh, with the taxane, which means they had either, either taxotere or, ta or taxol. Now these patients had already, in a certain amount, in a certain percentage, uh, peripheral neuropathy of grade one. So the study goal was to see whether TDM1 is adding more to this peripheral neuropathy. Um, the answer is yes, TDM1 was causing somewhat more peripheral neuropathy compared to uh, trastuzumab, but the good thing is, after a certain amount of time, which is about 300 days, this patient had a complete resolution of the peripheral neuropathy. So there is no leftover at a long time range follow-up in these patients. Uh, obviously, we also checked whether the, which of the taxanes were was producing more peripheral neuropathy with the addition of TDM1 afterwards. The answer is that it was not a big difference between the two taxin, paclitaxel and uh, docetaxel. Second, the um, thrombocytopenia. Um, a certain amount of patients have been treated in uh, Catherine's study with uh, platinum. So we focused especially in these patients and um, as expected, they had some, somewhat more um, development of uh, thrombocytopenia, especially with TDM1. And the good thing about it also, again, after about three, 30 days, the resolution rate was almost 100%. So good news is, again, thrombocytopenia was somewhat higher with TDM1, which is an antibody drug conjugate, compared to just the antibody uh, trastuzumab, but the resolution rate was very good. So the third um, aspect was uh, CNS metastasis. Now CNS metastasis is a big issue in patients who have very aggressive breast cancer, which is either triple negative or HER2 positive breast cancer. And um, we looked um, to this, into this aspect in the uh, Catherine study. And the basic result is that the incidence of CNS metastasis in both arm was quite similar, which was in the region of 5%. So negative news, we cannot avoid by TDM1. We can avoid all or a big part of the peripheral metastasis, but not the CNS metastasis. The occurrence was about 5%. Number two, um, as a first occurrence, CNS metastasis in the TDM1 arm was somewhat higher. Why? By statistical means, we call this a, recur um, a concurrent um, uh, risk, meaning that 
With TDM1, we can control the peripheral metastasis, but not the CNS metastasis. So the first event as an uh, invasive disease event was somewhat higher in the TDM1 arm, but at the end, these patients had also a longer survival. So in both arms, the incidence of peripheral metastasis was very, very different, 50% more in the standard arm as compared with TDM1. So the bottom line of this finding is that we still aim to look how to avoid peripheral metastasis because even with TDM1, we don't have a solution. But again, this is just a small part of the patient, which is 5%. The good news about the study is we have a very, very high control over the peripheral metastasis and this is why this is the new standard in the treatment of patients with residual disease after post-neuadjuvant uh, uh, treatment.